In keeping with the campaign promise, then Democratic candidate for Erie Mayor Joe Schember pledged an open and transparent administration. Along those lines, he has worked with us here at Jet 24 Action News, appearing on our air as a monthly guest. Joining us now is Erie Mayor Joe Schember himself. Uh, Mayor Schember, thanks again for joining with us. Thanks for having me on, Jill. I appreciate it. Now, as we mentioned before the break, we wanted to uh, ask you about the quality of life ordinance. A lot of people are raising concerns that they'll be slapped with a fine for every minor infraction. Uh, first of all, who will be enforcing this ordinance and what assurances, if any, can you give to the people who own property that it won't get out of control? Yeah. Our zoning officers are going to be the people enforcing this ordinance and they have really pledged they're going to give a warning uh, every time before they give a ticket. So the first thing is to give a warning, give the person the appropriate amount of time, and depending on what the situation is, that could be a day, it could be a month, but they'll give them the appropriate amount of time to rectify the situation before they would get a ticket. I, I, we're really hoping that this really improves our neighborhoods and makes them much more livable. Well, I know you can't target an area, but are there specific areas you're looking at first, or is this all just from people calling in to complain about areas? Well, we are going to definitely try to be much more aggressive in terms of looking at places, but people can certainly call us and report anything. The best place to call is the Citizens Response Center, which is 870-1111. If there's a problem in your neighborhood, report it there, and it will get quick action. And does it apply to everyone, meaning businesses as well? Absolutely. Uh, commercial properties, this is enforced on commercial properties as, as well as residential properties, and it will be enforced that way. And uh, we've actually gotten a little bit aggressive uh, in the downtown area because downtown is a priority. We're really trying to make that world class. And I, I know from experience from some complaints I've received, actually, that some downtown businesses have gotten uh, notices, the, the warning notices, not a ticket. Have you heard from the Trump campaign yet about the bill you sent? Have not. I, if, I, I'm not sure the bill has actually gone out yet. You know, okay. We had just determined the, the final amount within the last week or so, and I believe our finance department is going to get a bill out. I'm not sure it's gone out, but it will be going out. Whether it will get paid or not, I don't know, but $31,000 is, is a lot of money for the taxpayers to bear. And since it really was a campaign event, including a fundraiser for Trump's own campaign, it seems fair that, th that his campaign should pay that. Well, and I know because there are other events in the city that do require extra help from City Hall, but because this is a campaign event, that sets it apart from other ones? Well, in, in other events, oftentimes the, the people that are running the event pay for the, that extra cost. And in fact, that's part of our normal process with anyone that's going to do an event, for instance, in Perry Square, if they need the, the city stage, there's a charge for that. If they need police officers present, there, there's a charge for that. So most people doing events in the city uh, special events like that do pay a charge. Okay, now let's move over to the EMTA. That's been in the news a lot lately. Yes. Uh, county executive uh, appointments have yet to be voted on by county council. Do you foresee any problems with the bo board moving forward? Uh, no, I, I believe it's going to move forward. I think at county council's next meeting, which I believe is October 30th, if I'm not mistaken, that that will be on the agenda. Hopefully it will get passed. We'll have all nine board members in place, and then we can start a process of getting them in, in, into the role, understanding it, and, and start managing the EMTA for the good of the riders and the employees. So we have, uh, we've heard about a group of transportation experts coming in to discuss uh, inner city transportation. Part of that centers around the feasibility of a tram, which will run between Union Station and 14th Street and Dobbins Landing. Uh, will you attend that meeting, and have you heard about this, and what are your thoughts? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be able to attend that particular meeting because of uh, another uh, commitment I, that I already have. However, my feeling on the tram is, you know, we, we have shuttles or buses that, that look like trams but don't require tracks particularly with what's going to be going on at, at the intersection of the Bayfront Highway and State Street, where hopefully over the next couple of years we'll be putting the Bayfront Highway underneath State to make the downtown more connected to the Bayfront. I believe that if we if just use the buses that kind of look like trams but don't require the tracks, I think that's a better approach. Uh, too many times in the past in downtown Erie, for instance, we've closed State Street and that kind of killed things. So I think we need to move forward. Okay, Erie Mayor Joe Schember, thank you as always for taking the time to be with us tonight. Happy to be here. Thank you. And we'll be right back.